Uh, obviously, coming off of a uh, long night, didn't get much sleep, and you know, and with league play, you, you get your mindset goes from one game to the next game. You know, uh, the LSU game, <clears throat> we didn't. I didn't think we showed up with the sense of urgency you got to show up with, and uh, but that game's over with now. It moves on to the next game uh, against the Missouri team that's playing awful well. I think they're three and one in league play, and uh, it's a big game. It's the next game on our schedule. Uh, a team that obviously we play each and every year, you know, home and home. Uh, last year we split with them, so uh, Conzo is is doing an excellent job of of really getting those guys to play at a high level play with great energy and and certainly we've got to come out with great energy so I'm looking forward to our guys really improving upon the the performance we had the other night uh, that that was not the typical uh, Razorback performance and and uh, and we vowed to, to make sure that people see the real Razorbacks play when we play Saturday just reviewing the, the tape kind of what happened last night well I think it started off I thought we came out uh, uh, didn't make shots early on, but I thought we rushed shots. And when you don't don't make shots and, and you're rushing them also, uh, I, think, I think it puts a lot of pressure on your defense. And we had stops early in the game. Uh, then I think, you know, once LSU started attacking us, getting some easy opportunities, I thought our guys started pressing a little bit. And, uh, and it just seemed like it was an uphill battle. Uh, uh, even, you know, the, I think the score at one point in time, it was 20 – maybe 26 to 11 or something like that, 27. It stayed there for, and we had opportunities to really you know, cut into that lead right before the halftime and uh, didn't, didn't get it done. Uh, cut it to 12, and then it was an uphill battle. Uh, and I just kept trying to get combination to get out there to, to give us that energy that you got to play with. I thought our, our energy level was not uh, typical of how we play. Yeah, Mike, I mean, you obviously been doing this a long time. When a team's struggling or in a rut or whatever you want to call it, three-game losing streak, what's what's the key to getting them back on track? Well, I, I think the thing that's going to really help our basketball team is we've got to get a shot of injection with our defense. Uh, I think that's got to be the key. we got to stop our defense. And we got to get back to playing the way that we played early in the year. And we start trusting one another. The, the ball was moving, was shared. And when we scored, I thought it really uh, in, you know, it kind of intensified our defense. Our it, defense went up another level. And then our bench was really playing well. And we've got some other guys that are playing uh, uh, pretty good coming off the bench. I thought Darius came in and gave us some really good minutes. Trey continues to play uh, pretty good for us. But now we got to get the guys that start off the game. They got to get us to a good st- get off to a good start. Uh, I think those guys are. <clears throat> when you look at the guys that have been here, been there, done that, uh, I think they've got to be instrumental in in setting the tone, and so the other guys can follow. Coach, obviously, new year, new team. But are there any correlations or lessons that you can take from last year's Vandy game here? Well, I mean, that game in last year, you know, when I look at the records where we were last year to where we are right now, we had lost to Mississippi State here and lost a couple of games on the road. Uh, I think you could try to draw from those experiences that uh, it's still a long season. It's a lot of basketball to be played. And so I just feel that we got to come out and play with a sense of urgency. I think that's the biggest key there. And our leaders got to step up. Our seniors got to step up. Our whole team got to and play basketball the way we've been playing, you know, all year long. Uh, as I said, I thought we came down and shot some quick shots. Uh, LSU, all they did down on the end, came down and made about four or five passes and executed and got what they want. And they will come back down. And so now we. We just amounted a big, uh, a big, big hill, and uh, they had to continue to try to climb that hill. So, so we look forward to going into the next game, uh, hopefully with with a different mindset, and that is, you know, defensively, uh, be unpredictable, uh, but at the same time, we got to have some help side defense, rebound the basketball, get out in transition. I didn't think we we pushed the ball, we didn't run the ball, uh, we didn't see Daniel in action. You know, getting in position and trying to get posted up real quick. Uh, we didn't start off inside, and that's what you got to. We got to be a team to start inside out, and that's not necessarily just throwing the ball in. We got to attack the basket and create easy opportunities for ourselves. Is there uh, any plan at all to, to play Trey and, and uh, Gafford together? Or is the foul trouble risk just too great to use them both? Together? No, I, I, th- I think when the game dictates, we'll we'll look at that lineup, Matt. I mean, uh, Nate. When that, when the dick, when the uh, situation arises that we can, uh, we'll utilize that because Trey's obviously is a is a good post feeding and pass the basketball. He can step out and knock the shot down, and um, and it gives us some guys with some size out there. 
Mike, you started Adriel last night, and then he only played seven minutes. He missed a lot of shots. What would you think of him and just the, the way that? I, I thought he was anxious. I thought he was really anxious. I thought he was trying too hard. Uh, I thought they did they did a good job in the scouting, just let him just stay out there and shoot. And, uh, you know, I want Adriel to be a – uh, one of those blue collar guys, you know, get in the lanes, running the floor, defensive rebounding, some alley oops, and things of that nature. And uh, but I thought he got, uh, you know, playing against his home state. I thought he wanted to do it too much. But uh, uh, but we'll see as we go. We'll move on down to to the next game. Uh, I think he's been playing well though. Missouri lost Michael Porter Jr. early in the season, but they're still a very good team. What do they do well, and what kind of worries you heading into this game? Well, they got size. You know, they got the other Porter, Jonte, you know, someone I'm very familiar with. He can step out and shoot the basketball. Uh, the Robeson kid can really shoot the basketball. Purier still there. You got Phillips there. Uh, the big Tillman kid in the middle. Uh, the Geis kid. So they got some guys that, you know, they've been there for the last. Two years, and then you got some good young talent in there as well. And I think Conzo has done a really good job of going in there and and, and getting those guys to play how he wants them to play. Uh, that's uh, that's always important. They're playing with a lot of energy. They're playing defense. Uh, they're shooting the basketball well. Barnett is a guy that can really light it up. And so they that's what they're doing right now. They're really shooting the basketball. So they're guarding and they're defending. Mike, are you surprised how well they've, they've done without – Porter Jr.? No, I think that's, you know, a lot of teams, that's when they, they play even better, you know, because uh, when you don't have someone, it gives other guys opportunity to, to showcase what they're doing. Uh, again, Barnett's playing really well. The Robeson kid, uh, he's playing at a high level for them uh, right now. Uh, they're just, just playing like a team. Perrier, again, he's a physical basketball player, third-year guy. Uh, so now he gets the opportunity to shine. So it, it doesn't surprise me. It's uh, the thing about it is when you play team basketball and guys are playing and trusting one another, sharing the basketball, helping each other on defense. Boy, it makes a lot of things. Uh, it makes the game simple, and that's what you want. The more simple it is for guys, uh, the better your team is when you're executing. I think LSU and Missouri, obviously, they both really struggled last year. I know Missouri beat you guys there, but. You know, when they were on the road, they, they didn't do very well either mm -hmm. team. How different is this league now? Those two teams seem to have really ri 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 uh, risen up. I think it just it's to me it's another sampling of you know how competitive our league is, and whether you play at home or on the road, you got to come with it. And if you don't, and what took place with us here the other night, that can happen. So, and you don't want to. You don't want to give anything away at home. You want to take care of home. And so, uh, but I think it just tells you the, uh, the competitive nature of our league, where it is right now. It's really, really good. You, you worried about your guys' confidence with this three-game losing streak, or do you feel like the maturity will come through? Or just how do you feel about it? Well, let's that? see if the maturity and, you know, we've always talked about the next game's up. You know, one game don't don't make a season. And so we've done something we hadn't done in a while. That lose three games. And so – but the next game gives you an opportunity to uh, to better yourself. And we, we've done pretty good here at the house. So we want to make sure we, we come out and, and leave it on the floor. I think that's the biggest uh, – to me, the, the, the thing I want our guys to do when they come here, leave it all on the floor. Uh, play with that great energy. Play with that passion. Play with that competitiveness that we played up until this point. The last two games coming off the bench, Trey's been really good for you. What is the differences have you seen in him versus when he started coming off the bench in the Minnesota game? Well, he's, he's a senior now, and I, and I think he's playing with a more sense of urgency. He's playing much more aggressive, more assertive, and uh, he's scoring inside. And I think that's uh, that's going to bode well for us because we're going to need him, you know, in games, finishing off games for us. He can get to the, you know, he can score inside. He can shoot free throws. Uh, Trey has tremendous basketball IQ. He touches balls, whether we're in a man defense or in a matchup. Uh, again, he's a tremendous asset, kind of like another coach out on the floor. And so we're going to need him as well as a guy like Darius to step up, Cook. Uh, CJ, we got to get him to find his rhythm again. You know, that's uh, again when you don't have some of your top scores scoring for you, you got to have other guys come in and, and give you some quality minutes. With, uh, you know, T Tillman and 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 Jonte Porter, I guess they they both really played well last night, and Daniel's obviously having a good year. What, what do you think about those three freshmen all 
all going at it. Now it's going to be a war. And like I said, they, they're size 6'11". That's why I say people don't realize that's a long team. And then you put Barnett at 6'7". They're a long team. And so uh, you can't sit there and play half-court basketball with them. So we've got to make sure, you know, defensively, uh, we've we got to make them work. And, and offensively, we've got to get them in transition. But they're very, very talented. You know, Dante is a kid that can step away and shoot the basketball. Tillman is a big bruiser down there, very athletic, you know, he's uh, and getting better each and every game. So, uh, again, they've got a really good basketball team. It's going to be a real good game. I think it's going to be a, a tremendous game on Saturday. I think after after uh, Mizzou played at Florida, Michael White said the other day on the teleconference that he thought Barnett might be the most improved player in the SEC. What, what, what have you seen from him? I thought he was good last year. He was good against us last year. And I just see he's playing with a lot more confidence. Uh, uh, he's, to me, I think he's one of the leaders on that basketball team, and he's plays like one.